We are John and Catherine Iverson, and this is our dog, Kaya. About a month ago, we decided to pack all of our stuff and move across the country to North Carolina. We hope you enjoy watching all of our crazy adventures with living on the East Coast and making this house our home. All right. Hello, everyone. This video is going to be a little different. We've had a ton of questions, people asking us, you know, why did you move? Why did you decide North Carolina? And so we just wanted to make this video to answer all those questions um, for anyone else who's wondering, but also so we don't repeat ourselves a hundred times. So, um, but with that, there's kind of a backstory. And so with people who are new, who don't really know us, also family who does know us, but is also interested, this is kind of a, you know, what have we been doing with our lives um, with our history of um, tough things that we both have gone through in our marriage. So right when we got married, we right away just felt like we needed to start our family. It was something we felt very strong about. And so we started trying to have kids, you know, really early on and, you know, things were happening. Yeah, just a couple months, I think, right? In, it was like after, a month. After we were married, yeah, yeah, just a month, and we decided we wanted to try and start having kids right away. Yeah, and so I got off birth control, and we decided we wanted to start our family. And so, yeah, months went by, and nothing was happening, and uh, we, were, we just kind of kept pushing forward. And finally, at about... We'd been trying for 13 months, 15 months, and then we got pregnant with twins, naturally. Um, so that was a shock. We were very excited, but also shocked. I mean, my mom was a twin, and my mom's twin had twins, and so it definitely, it ran in the family. You know, we were just excited. I, you know, I was sick. I uh, had all the, you know, symptoms, and um, anyway, fast forward. Um, you know, things were going well, but then about 19, I was night 20 weeks or so, and it was in the middle of the night. I still remember I woke up to use the restroom and there was blood. And so I immediately called my midwife and she was like, okay, you guys need to go in, get it checked out. And, um, I didn't, I wasn't, you know, contracting or anything. There was just blood. And so we went to the emergency department and, um, they checked everything and the doctor came in and told me that I was going to give birth. Um, I have an incompetent cervix, which basically means I can't hold the weight of a pregnancy. Um, at this point, it was too late to do any sort of intervention. And so we just, I had to give birth and that was very uh, traumatic to say the least. Um, babies were fine which was the hardest part for me, just knowing babies were fine. It was my body that was kind of giving up on them or just couldn't go through with it. And so gave birth and they said, you know what? You know, this is a really sad thing that's happened to you guys, but should be fine in the future. You know, you'll get pregnant and we'll just give you a stitch or a cerclage is what they call it. And you'll be, you know, you should be good to go. Yeah, and it just reinforces the cervix so that it can carry the weight. So doctors are really clear, you know, you didn't do anything wrong. There's nothing you possibly could have done. You know, you could have laid on the couch the entire time. Wouldn't have made a difference, right? It's just um, nothing really that you can do. You just don't really know until you experience it. But yeah, I just said next time, you know, you'll work with a specialist, you'll get a cerclage, but, it, but you know, there's no reason you can't go on to have kids. Then after that, we, you know, gave it a couple months, let my body heal. We tried again. Um, things weren't happening. And so we finally were able to go to a doctor. And that's when we found out that I had PCOS. Um, did the ultrasounds and, you know, everything was confirmed. I've had other symptoms throughout my life um, that suggest that I have PCOS. The increased hair growth, especially around my face, which is been pretty um hard thing for me throughout my life but you know found out I had PCOS and it gave me a lot of answers and so we they put us on fertility medication and uh we got pregnant and it was actually like the week like a year later the same week that the 
or the twins had passed away. And so we got pregnant and, you know, so excited. But then eight weeks later, I miscarried. Another bummer. Um, but we were consistent and decided to try again. Yeah, we got the miscarriage. We we got it tested. And what was the, they did like a genetic, a genetic test. testing. Yeah. And what was, do you remember I what it was called? I can't remember what it was called, but basically they, the baby had, I, it's the most common cause of mispar miscarriage. Yeah, like but too many chromosomes it's had, or something. Yeah, the yeah. double the amount of chromosomes that it would have needed. Um, and so... Yeah, so it was just an it was just a normal, just a normal, kind of normal miscarriage. Yeah. Same thing. Hey, you know, too bad that you had the twins and then this happened. But you know, this is very common. There's no reason. There's no reason that you can't still have kids, right? So, so yeah, we we keep going and try again. Get on. Yep. And so we do the same thing. We take the medicine, and then we got pregnant. It was on Mother's Day in May, and. You know, we were, I was so excited again, ready, you know, it's our time. And then same thing, miscarried. And that was hard. That was, um, same, same reason, the same you know, thing. we did more testing. It was the exact same reason. And, and meanwhile, we kind of forgot to mention, I think, or we didn't think about it, but, um, after the twins, um, she'd gotten sick and then they gave her steroids to, to deal with the allergic reaction and ever ever since then, she just started having like we didn't know it at the time what it was, but started having anxiety anxiety attacks. I've um, had a tight throat for like six months. Yeah, or it felt like she couldn't breathe almost. Just it was really uncomfortable, and, and but started kind of experiencing symptoms then after after the loss of the twins of anxiety and and its effect. So after second miscarriage, um, we were finally like, okay, we need a break from this. Maybe this isn't our path. It just doesn't seem to be working. And so um, we decided to try foster care. We got certified and immediately, you know, we looked on the website and we found a sibling group of three kids that we felt we wanted to pursue and have, you know, to, to, to adopt. adopt. Yeah, they, we, were, we were looking to adopt kids who were like, whose these, parents had lost their rights and they were just in state custody and we, we were going to adopt them. And, and so... We had went through that route and at this time my health started to, I started showing more signs. I was really dizzy, um, which was the main sign. We got to the point where we were about to meet the kids in person and that's when I had my first panic attack it was in 2018 and I'd never experienced a panic attack before. It was so scary. I didn't know what was happening to me. Like I thought I was going to die. I, I ended up. I don't know how long I, I worked from home for like a week or two and just it was a little different than what we'd read about panic attacks like it it just lasted like she just felt dizzy uh like she couldn't I'm walk tired. on her own for like almost a week you know it so was, was really debilitating feeding her and and moving her around the home it was it was really kind of odd you know and we were at the point in foster care where it was like we're going to tell the kids, you know, and, and you're going to meet them. And so it was kind of like, if you're going to back out, back out we have now. To do it now. Because yeah. otherwise you tell the kids, they think they're getting adopted and you're going to cancel on them. And so it, it was awful, awful timing. Um, I mean, I guess it, it's good that it happened instead of later, but, you know, we kind of wish we would have known sooner too, because we went through this whole thing and we're just about to kind of get past that point of no return or at least difficult return. And we just knew we can't move forward. Like there's no way that we can add uh, three kids onto her plate with, with how it was affecting her physically and emotionally and um, with some of the special uh, emotional needs that they had with the trauma that they had been through and, you know, tore us up to do it, but we just had to back out. Um, before before we went any further, we felt like we had to stop then. So, so we did. Yeah. So we backed out of foster care. And then finally in 2019, we decided it was time to try again. We went and I we had to go on infertility medication again. Um, we did one round of the Famara and didn't work. And so they doubled my dose, uh, same didn't thing, work. didn't work. And so then third time they tripled my dose. And then, and so we went and, you know, did the ultrasound and I got pregnant with triplets, which was really scary. I still remember sitting and seeing, I was hoping we weren't having like four 
Like we were just Yeah. I remember when couldn't... I looked at the ultrasound and I remember him seeing it and just seeing the multiple uh <laughs> multiple kids and and I actually first thought I saw four and I was like oh my gosh like I thought I was gonna um and then they counted out three and and it was it know. was bittersweet like we were so excited but at the same time if my body couldn't hold two how is it gonna hold three and that's what the next appointments all of the doctors after that they were like they just a lot of them wouldn't give me a cerclage. They wouldn't give me a stitch yeah. because it. They just hadn't any seen anything like that before. Well, um, there, there was like no research really on kind of our crosshair of infertility of um, of having an incompetent cervix and being pregnant with triplets, right? Because they're both kind of rare, and so just the, there wasn't. It we, was pretty we grim. Hope, we were kind of hoping for one, right? That you get pregnant with one, and then you get the cerclage, and then. You just try and make it to like 28 weeks. Or make 30, it to viability. Which is like yeah. terrible. You know, if any kids come to 28 weeks, parents are just terrified. But for us, it was like a dream. Like, oh, well, if we could just get to 28 weeks, you know, then then we've got a chance. Even like 26 weeks. Right? Yeah. You know? So, yeah. So, all the doctors have told us, look, I don't really know if there's anything you could do. It was just hard. It was so hard. And I was so sick. I had to go to the hospital a couple of times to get IVs. I was so sick. And but, but eventually we got connected kind of through a friend of a, someone your mom knew, I thought, or, in or church, some friend. yeah, at my church. Someone knew a guy who was like, for yeah, he was the, care, and he was, he was the guy, The right? top, like, high-risk OB right. in Utah. The head of the head of, you know, it was, it was the... It, that was the guy like if anyone could you know kind of help you know maybe it was him so we went and he was willing to do the cerclage um yeah knew, knowing it was kind of experimental but at the same time he was time, at least willing to do it yeah which was what we wanted and so yeah so he did give us the cerclage he said i remember when i woke up he said how difficult the surgery was just because I didn't have I'm short. Uh, yeah, I just my cervix was so short. It's hard for him to even stitch it. And so anyway, we just kept going and got to 20 weeks and we went into my appointment and you know the the nurse is like, "Oh, just give me a minute." You know, walks out and comes back with another nurse and we just knew. Um my through, stitch, right? yep, um, my stitch was open and um babies were coming. And so immediately they admitted me and same thing, 20 weeks and gave birth to our three, three babies or triplets. And so yeah, December 23rd, some of them came 23rd and then some came Christmas Eve, Christmas Eve in the morning. And, you know, and so it was uh, not, you know, maybe not the best timing for yeah. that, but, but yeah. So, yeah, so it's been a ride. Um, and, you know, during all this time, I had been having panic attacks and I just, birth was so hard on my body and I still, I feel the effects of it. I don't know exactly what's caused them, but I do feel like it's hormone related. It's got to be something to do with um, the pregnancy, just the hard pregnancies that I had on my body. So it was, yeah, it was pretty, pretty difficult time. Anyway, so that's kind of... Our background so infertility and my anxiety and so the doors just kept closing and we prayed about you know we both believe in God and pray that he has a purpose and plan for our lives and so that kind of this kind of leads into why did we decide to move and um, for me it came down to you know what like um if I'm not meant to be a mom, you know, in this life, you know, of course I have my kids and I do believe I'll see them again. But what am I supposed to do with the rest of my life? You know, I'm 30 years old. I have my life ahead of me and doors seem to keep being closed as far as us having kids. What do I want to do with my life? What am I supposed to do with my life? And I just kept feeling strongly, which is so funny because I've always just wanted to stay in Utah. I've never wanted to like get out of my bubble of where I've always lived. Um, it's just been scary, you know, and I love my family, didn't want to move away from them. But it got to a point to where I felt like I needed something more. I needed to be pushed. I needed new experiences to meet new people. And so that's kind of what led us to start looking to move. Catherine's always loved the ocean, always loved the beach. And, 
And every time we vacation, it's always at the ocean and, and, and she's always talked about, Oh, wouldn't it just be so you can see my yeah. pictures behind yeah. me. Always. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't it. She'd always talk. Wouldn't it be nice to live by the ocean? I just kind of roll my eyes like, okay, you know, whatever. Everyone wants to live by the ocean, but like our lives are here. Your family's here. You know, this is, this is where we are. Um, but one time Catherine kind of brought it up and I just kind of felt, you know, maybe it was God whispering to me that this was different. You know, she brought it up and I could just tell it was, I needed to slow down and really say, uh, well, is this, is this really what we want to do? Or are you just kind of daydreaming again? Are you really serious about this? You know, cause if so, we'll figure it out. You know, if it's really important to you and it's something we need to do, then you know, we'll do whatever we have to. Uh, my work since COVID had kind of become more remote than it was initially. And Catherine has a job already that supports remote work. And, and I thought, well, I, you know, I think my work would support it. But if not, there's other places we can work if we have to, if, if you're serious about it. And talked more and found out pretty quickly that she was really serious about it. It felt really strongly like it was something that we, uh, needed to do. And that that's kind of where it, it led to. I, I really wasn't excited about the idea. I wasn't real excited. We were in a, a good affordable home. It was a new home and didn't didn't really love the idea. I wasn't I was, ready. I was a bit frustrated about it. Um, just kind of took some time to pray about it and asked, you know, is this really something that we need to do? And I remember feeling very uh, quickly and clearly in my mind that no, this is important, you know, and, and it's a good thing and that I needed to be supportive of it. And that, and so we knew, you know, we knew we were moving. We didn't really know when yet, but we knew, we knew we were going to. Um, so we started looking where, where do we want to go? Well, first went, looked at Texas. We went on a trip to Galveston, Texas, loved it. Mm -hmm. And so we're like, oh, let's Texas. Texas, let's move to Texas. And then we went on a trip to Florida, loved Florida. And then we went on a trip to South Carolina, led us to South Carolina. So um, we'd kind of looked- All by the ocean, right? Yeah, all by the That's ocean. Why. Yeah, all by the ocean. <laughs> she loved all those places. All those places, <laughs> yeah. So, but anyway, yeah. what it really came down to for us and why we chose North Carolina. One, not as many hurricanes. Um, two, it's not as hot. Um, I mean, it still gets hot during the summer, but we still have, you know, it still gets colder, but also there's not really any snow uh, where we're at. On the East Coast, we realized, hey, prices are getting better too. <laughs> so getting um, cheaper, getting, getting cheaper. And so that was obviously a pretty big pull. And so we just kept going up until kind of found got, an area got to the spot. Yeah, that we liked. And, yeah, we um, found this area in North Carolina and homes were just so much cheaper, especially just coming from the Utah, Idaho market where things were so expensive. Mm -hmm. um, and to come here and to have it be so different, you know, we're both have the big goal of getting out of debt and that's really important to us. And so that was also part of our search. And luckily this area that we found was, we found something yeah. very good and affordable and a very big blessing to us. And so we, we traded, we got a little bit older home and it's a little bit smaller, uh, but it has more, uh, we were in a town home before, so the square footage is smaller, but it has a yard, which Big we yard, didn't have, so. Which is great for yeah. a dog. Yeah. So, and it's nice also just to be out of, like, we don't have an HOA, which is also mm -hmm. really nice, because there's a lot of places here that do have HOAs, and so it's nice to just have our space, you know, become more self-reliant, you know, get out of debt and garden, and maybe eventually we'll get chickens, who knows, but. And so those are kind of the big reasons why we decided to come here and hopefully that answers some of your questions it's it's different you know we're a lot further away from family but we've we've been happy you know it's it's fun to be here it's been really nice here it's it's a pain sometimes having all the projects i get tired of it but um at the same time it's it's never it's, bored here it's good yeah we've just had a lot more time we're working on projects together so having things we're doing together that way instead of just needing to fill our time separately. So it's it's been good. I think with Catherine's anxiety and how it's kind of progressed and made things difficult is is really good. It gives us something we can we can do here that's comfortable and fun for her and and let's grow closer together too. So 
yeah thanks for watching sorry this video is a little longer than normal but hopefully that gives those of you who don't know us a good background of kind of our marriage and who we are a little bit and also answer some of those questions of why we're here in North Carolina so I, I would just say too I, I think I mean really this is just our friends and family that are watching it we've had a couple people subscribe to our videos who who we don't know um, but I just say that if there's anybody else watching this who's dealing with infertility maybe early in in that battle or or with anxiety and is trying to learn more about anxiety or panic attacks we're by no means experts but We've learned a lot from our journey, so certainly feel free to reach out if you have questions about that specifically. Thanks for watching and let us know what other things you wanna see in the area and thanks for your support and we love you all.